Hi, this is Sean for the Center for 21st Century Skills, and in this video I'm going to give you a comprehensive look at all of the objects that you can use in DAP. So let's get started. First off is the Activity Indicator View. Now, you could use the Activity Indicator View in any app to show that something's happening in the background. So if you wanted to, say, have something loading or some action happening, uh, you could use this to inform the user that something's actually going on. So next up is Button. Uh, now, buttons are probably the most useful object in DAP. Uh, you could use it to pretty much do anything in your app, uh, and, and I'm sure you've seen it in nearly every uh, iOS application. And uh, as you can see, they're really easy to manipulate. You just have to drag to resize, and once you go into the actual object uh, attributes, you can change everything from color and font and lots of things, um, but that's another sort of explanation. So let's move on. The next object is the date picker. Now the date picker is just uh, another object that DAP provides to make input uh, on the user's end uh, easier. So instead of having to say enter and then type in a date, you can simply uh, go into this date picker and use a scroll wheel. Now as you can see there's a lot of attributes that you can change on the date picker. Um, and overall it's just another thing that you could add to make, uh, to make your app look more professional and make it easier for the user. Next up we're going to talk about image view. Now, image view is probably one of the other most useful objects in DAP. Uh, if you wanted to, say, have a border at the top of your page or an image anywhere on your page, uh, you could just throw this in the app and then go into the settings for the object and actually put any image you like in it. So, say I had, like I said, a border uh, for my uh, app. I'd put a, the image view up at the top, go down in, and then I could click Photo Library and drag in an image from my photo library on my iOS device and put it straight into my app which is an extremely easy way to accomplish this. Uh, it's, it's just a drag and drop. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is a keyboard view. Now, the keyboard view is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you just use a keyboard anytime that you'd normally use a keyboard in an iOS app. So if you were in an app where you needed to search for something, uh, say you drag this keyboard view in, and then you're going to have to go into the actual code to get it to work, but you can drag it in and dap and uh, use it to show a mock-up of what it would look like. But yeah, you'd want to use a keyboard view anytime you have to enter in any sort of text or any data into an app uh, for the user. So uh, again, it's one of the more useful items, yet you'd have to do some uh, coding to actually get it to accomplish a task. Okay, now we're going to move on to labels. Now, labels are probably one of the most commonly used items that you can put in your application through DAP. Uh, anytime you want to put a title or uh, any anything that has text that's uh, just a limited amount of text that you don't want the user to be able to edit, I would uh, recommend using a label. So all you have to do with a label is just go into the attributes and change the text of it, and there you go. You have a new edited label. Uh, and it's very simple. So let's move on. Now let's go to map view. Okay, map view is a very specific object that you could put in your app, and the only times that you'd really use this is if your app had some sort of navigation or if you wanted to show uh, a map of some location. Um, so, really, it's a very specific use, but it's there for you, and the attributes allow you to choose uh, what uh, the la the layers of the map are. So you could choose to have uh, just a satellite image or street names and things like that, but that's really all you can do without going into code. You could tell it to show where the user is or just show the generic map. Uh, you'd actually have to go into code to tell it to show a specific location. That's just a feature that's not fully supported by DAP yet. Okay, so let's move on. Now we're going to navigation bar. Okay, a navigation bar is what you see on pretty much every iOS application, including DAP itself, at the top. Uh, it's the bar that lets you move around the app simpler than swiping or anything like that. So, as you can see, there's a lot of things that you could do with it. You could change the color, and you could add buttons on either side of it. So, DAP has given you a lot of options. The thing is, it's not fully supported as to the uh, actions that those buttons uh, create. So, I could put the buttons there, but then I'm going to go to the code and edit code to actually make the buttons do something. That's not something that DAP fully supports. Okay, now you can, see, you can see we're moving on to page control. Now, you've seen this uh, on the home screen of your actual iOS device. It's the three buttons at the, or the three lights, excuse me, at the bottom of the 
uh, view and it just shows you that you can uh, swipe between pages and that there's multiple pages so if your app had multiple pages and you wanted to be as simple as swiping between each page you could put one of these at the bottom uh, and then tell your app to uh, use that again that's something that you're gonna have to do through code not in the app itself okay now we're moving on to a picker view now the picker view is one of the scroll wheels similar to the date picker that we talked about earlier uh, but this one's a more specialized and in DAP you could actually choose what the, how many options there are and things like that so that's a nice thing that DAP allows you to do again what this actually does is something you're gonna have to deal with in code okay now we're gonna move on to the progress bar now the progress bar is another popular uh, object employed by app developers uh, it's really used uh, anytime that there's any loading or downloading or a, uh, really just any task that uh, dictates a progress step by step or uh, an overall. So it really, it's it's to tell the user that there's something going on in the background and it's going to take this amount of time. Again, you're going to have to go through code to tell it to actually show the correct amount of time and to change. And currently in DAP, all you're going to be able to do is pick the specific uh number to show right off the bat so you could tell it to start at zero or start at 0.5 full or things like that but you're gonna have to go through code to actually tell it to work okay moving on we're going now to rectangle view okay now rectangle view uh, in contrast I guess with buttons and with labels is more of a visual thing than a functional thing uh, what you're gonna be able to do with rectangle views is simply put a rectangle in your app now you can change the rectangle to change its border and its radius of the corners, um, but really all it is is something that you throw in the app to uh, maybe uh, encompass a, a title or something like that. It's just more visual than anything else. So moving on, we're going now to search bar. Now as you can see, the search bar is one of the most common uh, objects in real iOS applications. Anytime that you have to enter text and you want it to actually accomplish uh, a search, then you're going to see a search bar. If you'd want to use a search bar in your app, it's going to require coding on your own part as there's not a, a full support by DAP for this specific object. So you can do a lot of stuff aesthetically with it. So you could add in uh, uh, like a placeholder name. So like if you're going to enter any username and password, you could tell it to say username until the user clicks it to edit their own text. Um, but as of now, that's really some of the few things you're going to be able to do straight in DAP, free of code. Okay, and now we're moving on to the segmented control object. Now, segmented control is probably something you've seen in uh, utility applications, uh, and it's just really uh, something that puts two buttons next to each other. So if there's anything that uh, you'd normally accomplish with two buttons but are related, then I'd recommend using a segmented control because it just makes the app look more professional. Now you can change the style of the buttons, but again, it's not a fully supported object, so you're going to have to do some coding to make it work. Okay, now we're moving on to slider. Now a slider is one of those objects like the progress bar that shows something gradually. So the probably the best example of this is seen with brightness settings. Uh, you'd change something gradually by using the slider. Um, and really, you could use this in your app anytime you want the user to be able to do something gradually. Again, it's going to require some coding on your own. Okay, now we're moving on to the switch. Now the switch is something that you've seen in the settings application. It's used very frequently there. And what it allows you to do is just change a, a value of one thing. So if you want to switch one thing from on to off or a yes to no sort of uh, answer, then you could use this switch to do that. And it's usable in DAP, but again, it's going to need some code. Unlike buttons and things like that, it's not a, a highly supported uh, object by DAP. Okay, and moving on, we get to tab bar. Now, the tab bar is something that you see at the bottom of many applications uh, as a way to switch between a few different uh, settings or pages. Uh, and that's really what you'd use it for. In DAP, all you can do with this is uh, tell it which item to show as the selected item so as if you were on that page and uh, other than that that's really all you can do you can change some naming um, but that's it uh, so this is not one of the fully supported objects and 
uh, I'd recommend if you wanted to avoid code, uh, I'd recommend using something other than the tab bar. Okay, now we've moved on to the table view. Uh, now, the table view is probably one of the most useful and highly supported objects in DAP. Now, any time that you have a lot of data points or a lot of pages that you want to bring into one nice, concise view, I recommend using the table view. Uh, and there's a lot of things that you can do with the table view. There's a whole lot of attributes that you can change and uh, a lot of uh, visual things that you could add. And um, overall, it's probably one of the most supported uh, objects in DAP. And that's great because that means that you could do a lot without actually touching code. Uh, you can even use it to push to multiple pages. So like I said, if you have multiple pages and you want to bring it all uh, all into one view, you could use a ta uh, table view to do that and then tell each part of that table view to push to uh, a specific page. So that's a great use of the table view, and you could avoid using code pretty much at all by using this object. I really highly recommend it. Okay, moving on, we have the text field. Now, the text field is uh, pretty much seen in nearly every application because uh, it's really used any time that the user gets to enter in text. And that's a very common uh, action. So DAP has it here, and you could use it in uh, your app, say, if you wanted to have a, uh, uh, a username or password or uh, any sort of entering thing, like it says here, even on DAP itself, unique names. So you could add a name for an object. That's uh, an example of real use of the text field. And uh, it's something great that you could use with the keyboard view. Uh, but again, you're going to have to use code to get that to work. But that's just an example of how you could use this in your actual application. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can change about it, but again, to make it actually work, you're going to have to use code. Okay, let me pause for a second here. Uh, the next object, the text view, I don't actually have a video of, so I'm just going to explain it to you quickly. Similar to the text field, the text view is uh, just a, a larger area for the user to view text. So if you had a paragraph that you wanted to write in your app or uh, like a summary of your app in like an informational page or things like that, uh, you'd want to use a text view as the text field is uh, a smaller area. And the text field is really for users to enter text, while the text view is for them to view larger amounts of text in a document sort of form. So use text view anytime you need to show the user a uh, large amount of information uh, and you don't want to use multiple labels and things like that. This is just an easier way to get that much information across. Okay, moving on, we're going to go to the toolbar. Alright, the toolbar is very similar to the navigation bar, but uh, as you've probably seen it in many apps, it's at the bottom of the screen. Uh, so this can be compared to the tab bar, but uh, it's different from the tab bar as this is more of a, a navigation item than uh, the tab bar is sort of an aesthetic navigation item. Toolbar is very useful versus the nice looking tab bar. Uh, and that's something that's uh, reflected in the uh, usefulness in DAP. Uh, DAP gives you more options when using the toolbar. There's more things that you could do without code, which is why I recommend it if you're trying to avoid using code. Now, last but not least, we'll move on to the web view. Now, the web view is pretty uh, self-explanatory. It just pretty much gives you a window into the internet, uh, which is a great feature that DAP allows you to use in your app without using code. Uh, if you drag in a web view, you could resize it to whatever size you'd like, and then choose to rescale websites that you view in the web view uh, to the size of the window. So, say I had a, a small window in my app that I wanted to show a website in, I could use that and then uh, click the scalable option and then that uh, entire website will scale into that little window so really the usefulness of this is that you could put the web uh, a website or the internet in general into your app uh, either full screen or in a little section of the app now why is uh, why is that great well it's great because you don't have to use any code to do this and the actual window into the internet this web view is fully interactable you could use it when you're using the application in a live preview or when you've completed your app and you've uh, exported it from DAP. Uh, you could use that internet fully. So that web view is a fully useful uh, item uh, in the fact that you can actually navigate a website. So say you had a link to your application or your company's website in your app, 
Uh, it could pull up that website and then allow the user to navigate around the website all without using any code at all. Okay, so this was just a quick rundown of all of the objects in DAP. I hope that you were able to see which objects would be most useful to you and uh, how you could actually implement them in your application. So, to close this video out, I just want to say this. The best use you can have of DAP is to try new things in terms of your development. Uh, say you had an idea uh, for a great application and you knew exactly how you wanted it to run. Well, I say the first thing that you should do with DAP is try something different than that. Pull in a bunch of objects and see how they interact with each other, see how you can use them to your advantage, and then see how DAP can help you use them uh, without having to write lines and lines of code and without having to spend time doing that. In doing that and in experimenting with what you could do with DAP, you're going to learn how to use DAP and then you're going to learn how to use DAP to help you develop your application. So I hope this video has been of help to you in learning how to implement all of the objects in DAP. That being said, good luck and enjoy using DAP to help your development process.